If you've never rebuilt something before, having instructions is usually helpful. And having them in a language you understand is usually preferred. There's a first time for everything. Let's get to it. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I've spent a fair amount of time cleaning the carburetor to be ready for reassembly, and all of the new replacement parts you see me using here were a part of this rebuild kit I got from Weber Performance. I'm not sponsored, I'm just sharing because I found it to be pretty good, so hopefully it can help someone else. So this is part of the accelerator pump, basically a lift pump that engages when you first pump the throttle. I'm replacing the pump delivery valve and the copper gaskets. The accelerator pump jet will be reused and it's a 45, which we'll come back to later. And both auxiliary venturi were cleaned and reused as per the original setup. Both emulsion tubes were also reused as before, the primary tube being an F50 and the secondary being an F6. You'll be sensing a pattern by now. Air correctors are also as per before, with a 160 for the primary and a 165 for the secondary. Jets are 140 for the primary and 135 for the secondary. I was suspecting that these were too big, but I don't want to make too many changes before I start the car again. As I was using these already before, I decided to stick with them for now. The kit came with a new accelerator pump diaphragm, so that was next, reusing the original spring and the fresh looking lift pump. I also forget how many birds we've got around here, so you can enjoy those background sounds as well. Looks brand new. Onto the idle mixture screw now, and let's do a little comparison. Yeah. New one in, turned in until it seats, and then backed off two full turns. Next is the strainer assembly, which is obviously new, and then the inspection plug to secure it all in place. Onto the needle valve assembly, and this was also a complete replacement in the service kit. You can see a minimal difference in the hanger there, but they're both stamped Weber, so I assume it's just a revised design. Now for the fun part, setting the floats. There are different types of floats available. These are the plastic type, however on older generation carburetors, these were usually brass. The exact description for float height from Weber is as follows. 35 mils from the bottom of the float to the bottom of the carb top plate, with the plate held vertically and the float hanging downwards, making light contact with the needle valve. Just like that. The top cover gasket is next, then the cover assembly can go back on and I can reattach the mechanical choke. A little bit of tie wire, I suspect this is actually meant to be an R-clip, and we are almost done for reassembly. Here's that nice TPU gasket I 3D printed in the previous video for the air cleaner. And now I can finally put this bad boy together. Let's get them on the car. I like how you can show things for Bear. And Angelo was kind enough to be there to show Bear and I how strong it was. <laughs> I also was feeling extremely strong that day. Oh. And then James rang, and I can't actually remember what he's talking about yeah, here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Pain, um, mail back, and then you've got to physically take it to pay it. Anyway, time for a new oil filter, and I'm using a Marl OC261. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know there exists a tool to set spark plug gaps, so just imagine that's what I'm using off camera here. Edit into the thing and say, don't watch this. And I replace the plugs with the same again, which are the NGK BP5E. These are actually meant to be gapped to about 0.8 out of the box, but surprisingly, they're about 0.9. So we gapped them down to 0.8 and chucked them in. Apparently another contentious idea, but I'm also using copper grease on the threads, steel plugs, aluminium head, copper grease. Time for a new fuel filter, which is a Ryko Z91, and I'll be using the same again. Easy. This is the gasket that came with the Carby service kit, which obviously is no bueno for my custom setup. So I cut one out of gasket paper. I'm going to be honest, it wasn't elegant. I completely forgot to make one in advance, but that'll do. Luckily this gasket fit and it was time to mount the Carby. This is another 3D print because I lost the OEM part, the sandwich plate for the choke cable, and then just made us some muffins. Closed. Open. I am oh. aware that this is not great, but one thing at a time.
The day was wearing on at this point and we may have already been running late for an appointment, but I had to know if it would start before we left. So, because we had it running pretty good, we figured tomorrow would be time for a road tune and started reassembling the final bits. Depending on how long you've been following me for, you may or may not be aware of what killed the first 5k I had in this car. Ironically, I know this isn't really proper Loctite procedure, but it'll do. The next day I went to start it and drive it up to the workshop. But although it didn't sound great, I just had to make it there so we could give it a proper tune. But, dear viewers, it did not make it there. So the carb is rebuilt, adapter plate's finished, they're both on the engine, car starts, kind of ran for a bit, and then didn't want to work. It has been a saga and a half. I think I've worked it out now. I don't reckon you're gonna guess what it is, but if you think you know, let me know in the comments, and I'll finish editing these videos so that you can see.